The federal government is alleging that a Louisville assistant uh, requested a payment from an Adidas representative to provide to a Louisville recruit. It was alleged to be $100,000. Did you know anything about that? No. I, one of the toughest things you have to do, and I hope you never do it, is take a lie detector test. You have a blood pressure machine, you're wired up, and I, asked, I was asked two questions. I said, and I want you to ask me if any other recruits in my tenure were ever given anything. And he said, that's not what we're here for. We're here for, did you have any knowledge of the Bowen family getting any money? Did you have any knowledge of an Adidas transaction? And I answered, absolutely not on both questions and passed the lie detector test. So I had no knowledge of any of this. I have heard reasonable people ask the question, how could he not have known? How, how do you respond to that? Jay, all I can tell you is I don't answer to those people. I answer to my players who have been over the top in support of me. I answer to my assistant coaches and most important, my family. But the one person you got to answer to in life is God. And I sit here today and tell you, should I have known that somebody walked into a hotel room? And that I don't see how I could possibly know. Uh, in the other case, people say, how did you not know? Well, there were security in the building, assistant coaches, uh, 20 managers. So we monitor social media. Not one thing came out in social media in that other case. So should I know, let's just say, I take ownership for who I hired and take full responsibility for that. Uh, when you're head coach at Louisville, it made me think of this reputation you have always had for being on top of every single detail. Do you think that reputation hurts you now in the court of public opinion with the way people look at this? Jay, again, I'm going to answer to God. And I know the truth. And does it hurt me? Of course it hurts me. You know, I want, I want everybody to be proud of me. It hurts. But that being said, if I knew something was wrong, I immediately would have terminated anybody in that situation. I have very little... Um, I don't have any tolerance for people that do the wrong thing in that area. I do go over every little point. But no, I didn't know someone walked in a hotel room and was part of a sting operation. No, I didn't know that. What kind of access did, did Jim Gatto or anyone from Adidas have to the basketball program by virtue of the, the contract? Very little. They had very little. And I don't think they wanted access. Um, a week before this broke, they were doing a whole thing, testing area, they, they, built, they took a whole gymnasium and they were testing the shoes and using our players and showing it how it works. That was the first real interaction we've ever had with Adidas in terms of, of getting involved with, with their brand. Did you know that any of your assistants were having communications with Jim Gatto? No, not to my knowledge. Uh, if they were, it was about, I knew Kenny Johnson. If I tell him, look, I, I got some communication about, we want to get our players into Adidas Nation, when I say players, University of Louisville basketball players, to work Adidas Nation because they get a chance to play in front of all the pro scouts. So we had three or four that were going to do it. Dang Nadell couldn't do it. He was, he was hurt. So we had Ray Spaulding and B.J. King go and Donovan Mitchell the year before. So most of our communication and assistant coaches was about that or about eight, uh, AAU programs that are represented by Adidas uh, players that type of stuff, but nothing to do with, with payments or anything of that nature. So as head coach at Louisville, your interaction with, with anyone from Adidas would be how often? Well, based on my text messages that I turned over uh, to the FBI voluntarily, uh, based on, on that, it was, it was very minimal, um, maybe two or three times a year. On Tuesday, you filed suit against Adidas, uh, the United States District Court for the Western District of Kentucky. Why, why did you decide to file suit against Adidas now? Well, they terminated me without a phone call, and that's not the reason. It's not revenge for that. I felt they're largely responsible for what has gone on, and they took my love and my passion away from me. Not all of them. There were other reasons, uh, one being one of my coaches. Uh, took my love of my life away, besides my personal family. Um, so they are responsible for their actions. As I take ownership for, for two hires, they must take ownership for what they did. You've said publicly on, on multiple occasions now that you will be vindicated in this. 
What does vindication mean to you? I've already been vindicated. Not by a lie detector test, just by the text messages my players have sent me, the phone calls from my assistant coaches, um, other people. I've been vindicated in my eyes. Nobody's been arrested on my staff. Um, I've been vindicated because I have to answer to one person. We all do. Whatever God you believe in, that's the most important thing. Do you feel comfortable that, that you will be clear of any charge coming your way in the future? 1,000%. Because I know, I know the truth. And like I tell my players, uh, I'm not going to, the one thing you don't want to do is ever mislead the FBI or the U.S. Attorney. You don't, you don't want to do that. There, you've got bigger problems if you do that. You better tell the truth. How do you feel about the way the University of Louisville has, has treated you since this news came out? When you say the University of Louisville, the people there are the love of my life, the other coaches. I worship the ground that my players walk on. That's how much I love them. But to me, this board of trustees locking me out of my office, telling me I'm dismissed before facts came out, let it develop. They're not the University of Louisville. They're a board hired by the governor to deal with the, the president's situation a while ago. They're not the University of Louisville that I know. So I hold no, I harbor no bitterness. I'll get better rather than bitter, uh, I, but I, harder, I don't believe it's the University of Louisville. So the University of Louisville didn't treat me that way. This board of trustees did. And a couple of them, I shouldn't put them all in one lump sum. What was the most emotional time in this? to date? Speaking to the players. Have you, have you been able to have interaction with the players since you last spoke with them? What I told them, I said, guys, David Padgett is one of you. He played for me. He's like a son to me, like you are. Give him everything you got. Give it to him. Win it all. Um, but I said, I'm not going to be in contact with you. It's his team now. Do you believe you will coach again? I don't know. I'm not sure I want to. Um, don't know. Why, why do you say you're not sure you want to? Uh, who knows what, you know, I'm just trying to concentrate on today. And I'm really not concerned about the future. How do you think this affects your legacy? Um, my legacy is really not important because I'm not that significant. I think it, it takes you a long time to get an ounce of humility. But when you turn 50, I don't know if you're 50 yet, but, uh, but you, you realize that humility is the most important word in the dictionary. And my legacy is really irrelevant. It's not that important.